from Stop Chasing Pain. Time for another Instagram TV section here of hashtag quarantine strong. I'm going to talk about stress again. So stress tightens up tissue and tight tissue doesn't accept blood flow well. And we need blood flow because blood flow is how you get oxygen and how you get nutrients into cells so they can heal and they can regenerate. One of the things that you may notice when you're under such constant stress right now is that you may have old pain, old injuries, autoimmune diseases that are kicking up and getting worse right now. And that's because of the underlying sympathetic dominant stress response that you're under. So we need to increase blood flow. This is going to be the first of a series. And I'm going to show you how we can do that. What we want to do is we want to stimulate more nitric oxide delivery into the body, or what we call ENOS, endothelial NOS. And this dilates blood vessels, which means it makes them bigger. And that's good because if they're bigger, they can deliver more what? Oxygen and nutrients. It's going to improve glucose uptake. And that's important because nerves and the brain need lots of glucose. So it activates energy in the brain. And as we know, the brain runs the show, right? So you may notice that you'll get very tired, you get fatigued, you'll get lethargic, you'll get brain fog very easy when you don't have enough nitric oxide delivery into the body. It's going to regulate insulin, and without nitric oxide, insulin cannot work properly, and that's sort of maybe kind of a little bit important in relationship to your blood sugar levels and your crashing and your burning. As I said before, the brain and the nerves need oxygen, glucose, and stimulation. So many people are trying to stimulate through movement, and that's a good thing. We want that, but you also want to make sure that you're going to have some nice ratios of the glucose and the oxygen in the body with some of the quick strategies that we're going to go over here. And as we said, vasodilation increases nutrient delivery and recovery and regeneration. So here are some ENOS or nitric oxide tactics that you can do. I'll go through them one at a time and just start with one or two and work your way up. Make an effort to breathe via the nose during the day and concentrate on expanding the sides of the lower part of the rib cage. Because what happens is when you breathe through the nose, you're going to actually release nitric oxide when you breathe through the nose. You don't release that when you breathe in through your mouth. It's through the nose. And when you concentrate on expanding the outside of the bottom of the rib cage, the sides of the rib cage, that's going to help you expand in your diaphragm or the cylinder. So it's not only breathing from your belly, but you want to breathe from the sides and the back. That gets the whole thing, like you're inflating up a balloon. And when you breathe in through your nose, you'll automatically expand more easily through the diaphragm. So try this little trick right now. I want you to stop and take three deep breaths in through your mouth only, in and out through your mouth. And notice where do you feel expansion happen? Where do you feel movement happen? Where do you feel tension? Normally you'll feel it in the neck, the shoulders, and the lungs. Now I want you to do three deep breaths in and out through your nose. And then tell me, where do you feel expansion and motion? You should feel it down in the belly, down near the sides, and in the back. So automatically just changing that breathing habit forces the diaphragm to move better. And then when the diaphragm moves, that moves the organs, that moves fluid in the body, and you automatically feel better. And when you breathe in through your nose, you're going to deliver more oxygen to the bottom one-third of the lungs. And the bottom one-third of the lungs is where you have a significant amount of red blood cell production. And the more oxygen we can get into red blood cells, well, the better. That means we're going to be able to oxygenate the tissues because you have a substantial amount of RBCs in the lungs. Okay? Um, no. Number three, tape your mouth shut at night while you sleep. Because one thing that happens is when you sleep at night, you might not know that you're opening your mouth. And think about how many hours you're not breathing through your diaphragm, right? Plus, you're going to dry out your mouth. You're not going to be making a lot of saliva. You'll increase the amount of bacteria in your mouth, which one, can lead to gingivitis or cavities. But two, that extra bacteria 
can irritate an already irritated autoimmune system that is having an issue already with compromised uh, bacteria because you actually have lymphatics below every single tooth and the lymphatic system is the detoxification system of the body and people can become overloaded with mouth bacteria and that can actually feed chronic pain and it can feed autoimmune disease. So tape your mouth shut at night and then that'll help with nitric oxide delivery at night. Uh, breathe into the nose and exhale through a coffee straw from the mouth. So this will help eccentric strength of the diaphragm. So here's what you can do. You can breathe in normally through your nose and then take a coffee straw and breathe out through a coffee straw, exhale, and then that'll usually take you about seven to eight seconds to do that. And that will build up what we call eccentric strength of the diaphragm, the strength of a muscle through its not only contraction phase, but its relaxation type of phase. This one is really, really powerful. It can make you a hashtag monster really, really fast. Uh, increase your intake of antioxidants, vitamin C and polyphenols. Vitamin C is great because it's antiviral. That'll help strengthen up your immune system quite a bit. Uh, glutathione, liposomal, is preferred. You know, taking it through pill form and ingesting it, you really don't get much absorption in there. So liposomal is the best way to do glutathione. It's the most important antioxidant in your body. Uh, high intensity exercise works great. Rebounding, that means jumping up and down, doing jumping jacks, squat jumps, sprint training, things like that. Okay, just make sure you don't do too much. You don't cause pain when you do it because if you're not used to high intensity exercise, you can get injured quick, fast, and in a hurry. So I always tell people to start rebounding and you've got built-in rebounders. They're called your calves. Just start to jump up and down on the balls of your feet like that. And that also stimulates your vestibular system, which is your inner ear or your balance system. And it also moves fluid in the body and it's freaking fun. And then number eight, you could take ginkgo biloba. You can also take fever view and you can take uh, then posetine. And you can start with this list of 10 and uh, that can make an improvement on dilating your blood vessels, which gives you better vascularization and blood flow and nutrient delivery for recovery, regeneration, and healing. Because your brain really, really likes it when you can get a lot of oxygen. It needs about 25% of the available oxygen in your body and about <laughs> the same amount of glucose in your body. So it's a stingy little sucker, and if it doesn't get it, it'll tell you quick, fast, and a hurry that it's not happy. And usually that'll be through tired, fatigue, stress, pain, things like that. You can also learn more by following us on StopChasingPain.com. You can join our membership site. We have over 800 videos that have been made. And you can pop in there anytime. Become part of the community where we share everything to help you do what you love better. And you can find us on YouTube, Instagram, my podcast on, on iTunes, Spotify, and Google Play. Thanks so much for tuning in. Stay safe, stay strong, stay positive. We can do it if we stick together. Much love.